couple in our live stream of Sunday service. We're so glad that you've popped on and joined us. Uh, when we feel surrounded by chaos and anxiety and fear and disease, it's good just to gather and remind ourselves that we're surrounded by God and that he's with us. We're going to start a service in about five minutes, so hang tight and we'll be with you in just a few.
Good morning, Price Chapel family. It's so great to see you. I'm glad you've jumped on our live stream experience this Sunday morning. We're glad just to be together with you. Uh, if you're hopping on and, and this is your first time to Price Chapel online, we want to welcome you. My name's Steve, the lead pastor here at Price Chapel. I hope you guys have been having a good weekend and not getting too bored again. Uh, yesterday, my family was able to get out and just hike up in the hills a little bit by ourselves. And uh, we also started a painting our basement, <laughs> so we're finding things to keep us going, and I hope you are too, and you're reaching out to those around you. I, I want to start this morning by sharing just one verse um, from Mark's gospel with you, one that's really just impacted me yesterday. Uh, hopefully you've been following along. We provided during the season of Lent a Bible reading calendar for you to be able to read and, and connect with the scriptures um, every day, and so hopefully you've been doing that. Yesterday's was Mark 15, verse 21. It was only one verse, and it's from this story where Jesus is uh, talking to, uh, is Jesus has been uh, arrested, and he's been whipped, and he's been beaten, and they're taking him to be crucified. He's carrying his cross, and he's, he's just falling under the weight of all of it. And Mark 15, 21 says this, A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. And, and, and so Jesus is there. He, he's under the weight of, 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 of all the pain and, and the emotion and the turmoil, and he just can't carry the cross anymore. And they ask this guy, Simon of Cyrene, this, this pilgrim from North Africa, to come and carry the cross of Jesus. And there's so much meaning here because I think there's, there's just limits to what we can bear. There's limits to, to how much we can handle, how much stress we can take, what we can handle financially, what we can handle emotionally and physically. And there's sometimes where we need someone to come along and help us carry the cross. And I love this story because it shows us that Jesus even had such a moment. He had such a moment uh, of, of being overwhelmed where he needed someone to be supplied to carry his cross. And so there's some moments in the coming weeks and months where we're going to need God to send a Simon of Cyrene to us to help us carry the load that we can't carry anymore. The, the scriptures say to, to bear with one another's burdens and, and carry those for each other. And so we want to be able to do that for each other and have the humility to say, I need someone to help me carry the burdens. We want to be able to do that for each other as a church family. And then there's other moments where we get to be a Simon of Cyrene, where we get to come along and carry the cross for someone else. And that's such a blessing. Uh, another thing about the story that you wouldn't know from the text is it mentions that Simon's sons are Rufus and Alexander. Uh, Rufus uh, it sounds like a dog name. I don't, I don't know many humans named Rufus today, but Rufus and Alexander. And what we know from church history is that in the first century, Rufus and Alexander become bishops or leaders in the early church. And so Simon must have come to be a follower of Jesus and know Jesus. And, and can you imagine being in church? You, you're gathered in church, and, and it's not online, it's in person, and you're gathered and Simon of Cyrene walks in, and you've heard the stories. And you point at him, you're like, isn't that the guy who carried the cross? That's the cross carrier. That's the one who carried Jesus' cross. <laughs> Oh, I'd just be ready to worship at that point. Oh, Jesus, thank you that someone who got to carry your cross is here. I thank you that we can come and, and carry your cross. We can carry each other's crosses. We can be a Simon of Cyrene today in 2020. And so would you pray with me as, as we prepare just for a time of worship and, and teaching and interview some stories today. We have some great stuff planned. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are with us. We thank you that you see when we've come to the end of our rope, that you see when we've reached our limit. And in those moments, you and your graciousness send us, just as you did for your son, a Simon of Cyrene, someone to help us, someone to help carry the burdens that we cannot carry on our own. And we thank you that in this moment, you're going to continue to do that. And we can do that for one another. We love you, Jesus. Would you please guide this time of worship? We pray for every home that's, that's tuning in right now, that every home would become a house of worship, a place where your spirit 
dwells, where your presence is known, and where your name is worshipped. We pray these scenes in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to invite Renee and Justin up to lead worship with us this morning. Good morning, church family. Um, Would you please, from your homes, from wherever you're at, with your phones, whatever technology we've got, would you please worship with us today? You were a lover before time's beginning. You gave your love freely withholding nothing, Jesus, my Jesus. You carried the weight of the world on your shoulders. You stopped at nothing. To prove you were for us, Jesus, my Jesus. It's extravagant, it doesn't make sense, we'll never comprehend the way you love us. It's something. Only heaven knows just how far you go To say you love us To say you love us To say you love us You don't believe Comfort us in our greatest unraveling, Jesus, my Jesus. You are the dawn that is breaking within me. You are the sun that is rising around me. Jesus, my Jesus, it's extravagant, it doesn't make sense, we'll never comprehend the way you love us, it's unthinkable, only Just how far you go to say you love us, to say you love us, to say you love us. Here is all my love, it's yours, no conditions when. You pull me close, no, I won't resist it, here is all my love, it's yours, no conditions when you pull me close, no, I won't resist it, here is all my love, it's yours, no conditions when you pull me close, no, I won't resist it, no, I won't resist it, no, I won't resist it, no, I won't resist it.
It's extravagant. It doesn't make sense. We'll never comprehend the way you love us. It's unthinkable. Only heaven knows just how far you'd go to say you love us. It's extravagant. It doesn't make sense. We'll never comprehend to say you love us. It's unthinkable. Only heaven just how far you go to say you love us 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 To say you love us. Amen. So this week's been kind of interesting. In just the past few weeks, um, just with everything going on, the, the unease, the change in lives, the way we live different, um, just really not knowing what to expect, the anxieties. And... As I went through this week, I'm just trying to think, man, how can I pray for the situation with what's going on? And and we came across this song, Holy Spirit, which, um, man, what a powerful way to pray. To think about Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Please just overcome us with your Holy Spirit in our houses, in our churches, in our, our communities um, to be our living hope. So really, that's my prayer today coming into this song. Um, just the Holy Spirit, consume us. Of 
Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Do what I say. place we worship you in the places that we are watching that we are worshiping together throughout this city throughout this county throughout this state and lord we just we thank you that we are not alone in worship today that that people all around the world are worshiping together that your name is being lifted high that your name is being praised and glorified because you are good and you are faithful. And Lord, we delight in worshiping you today. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to invite up Steve and Alex, and they are going to share with us today. Well, thank you, Justin and Renee, for leading us in worship. Uh, I just had a great time in the back of the room getting to engage with that. Well, this morning was supposed to be Body Life Sunday, and Body Life Sunday for us is this Sunday where we do baptisms, and we celebrate new members, and we dedicate children to the Lord, and we share stories. And so I am a little disappointed that we're not getting to do it in its full because we had some people that were going to get baptized today. And um, we couldn't do that. So that is sad. But I, I want to just highlight a few people who have said yes to church membership. We had a membership class a couple of weeks ago. And Rose and Mose Howa, um, we want to welcome you as members here at Price Chapel. David and Misty Anderson and your family want to welcome you. You guys are awesome. And Zach Kanakis want to welcome you as well. Yay. And uh, we have another family probably going to be joining this week too. So um, we'll keep you updated on that. Um, this morning, though, one of the things we did have planned when we were going to meet in person was for uh, Alex to be able to share about the sabbatical that he just had. And so I just want to sh share a little bit to set that up. Um, so last December, um, Alex started getting ready to start a sabbatical at the beginning of January. And we had adopted a policy as a church family that after seven years of being a pastor at Price Chapel, he'd get a two-month sabbatical. 
And a sabbatical isn't just a, like a, a two-month vacation, but it's a time for study and renewal and rest and growing personally, spiritually, family time. And so Alex got to embark on, on a two-month journey. Um, I had a sabbatical many years ago uh, when I was in Bellingham, Washington, and it blessed my soul so much. And so this morning, we, I want to take some time, and I, I want Alex to share with us some of his sabbatical lessons, because I think there's going to be lessons in it that are going to be appropriate for us, too, in this season um, of how, to, how do we enter in Sabbath and enter in rest. So, uh, Alex, we're glad to have you back, and I'm so sorry you got back from sabbatical. We had, like, a couple Sundays, and then, you know, the world changed. And uh, so Alex is really sad, because he hasn't seen some of you since, like, December, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a while <laughs> since I've seen a lot of people. I was talking to somebody uh, recently, and they were wearing something, and I was like, hey, is that new? And they were like, yeah, I got it for Christmas. And I was like, oh, well, I guess, yeah, I haven't seen you in that long, so <laughs> yeah, it happens like that. Exactly. So um, so it's it's this new territory for all of us. But Alex, would you just start out and tell us, what are some things you did on sabbatical? Yeah, um, I did... Uh, I did a lot of things actually um a lot of it was rest um spending some time uh just getting some rest um sleeping in a little bit here and there uh changing my schedule uh, actually happened quite quite a bit um and then i spent a lot of time studying uh, my bible at first uh and praying and journaling through a lot of uh, the things that i was uh, thinking and feeling and um so that was really good but then i also got a chance to spend a lot of time with my family I uh, got a chance to take my kids to school and talk with them about, you know, school life and all that and enjoy. Uh, not that I don't do that normally, but um, I got to spend extra time uh, investing in them and just uh, uh, spending time with the family and doing things together. Um, I did a little personal retreat uh, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, which was a great time. And I'll share a little bit about that in a minute. Um, and uh, I spent a lot of time, too, investing in some resources uh, that talks specifically about s- Sabbath rest um, and how to Sabbath well. And uh, that's where kind of the majority of my lessons ended up uh, being um, this morning. Uh, or, sorry, during my sabbatical. So, yeah. Uh, and I rode my bike a little bit, so that was good. So Awesome. Yeah, Alex got to get a new road bike right before sabbatical, so that was that was really nice. So... Okay, we're getting some feedback, but we can't hear Alex. So we're going to turn Alex up a little bit and have Alex put his microphone right on his lips um, and kiss is the that, bike, and that that'll, that that'll probably help we'll find just out here right there. Pretty shortly. So it's about a 30-second delay, yeah. so we'll see. If you go in my office, you'll be able to tell if you can hear him too. So behind the scenes, we got monitors set up in the office, and yeah, that's all right. So um, so Alex, uh, you gotta you got to do some pretty cool stuff during sabbatical and uh, got to change up your routine, obviously. Uh, what were some of the lessons that you learned during sabbatical? What were some of the things that God did in you and you learned during this time? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. First of all, though, I just realized we don't have our podcast audio going either. Oh, that's uh, okay. We'll, so, uh, we'll try to. Yeah, we should probably <laughs> do that. <laughs> that's okay. Oh, man. I got so caught up into worship this morning that I, I forgot to get that started. But um, Steve's too loud. So, all right. Uh, I'll just bring my mic down. We're adjusting on okay. the fly here. Yeah. I'm good now? All right, we're good. All right, and we're recording there. All right, so Steve's question to me was, uh, what were some of my major lessons that I learned on sabbatical? Um, Yeah, so one of the things heading into sabbatical was I was feeling uh, just a kind of season of emotional brokenness. Um, I had uh, felt kind of this strain where I was was feeling like I was burning out. Um, I had kind of felt like I was coming to the end of my rope. Like there was uh, not much passion, not much excitement for for doing things in ministry. Um, and uh, I was just kind of going through the motions in a lot of ways. And I, I started feeling that and I felt like, oh, man, something's wrong. Something's off and I need to fix this. And so uh, that's one of the things that sabbatical offered me an op- opportunity to do was really just press pause on a whole lot of things in life um, and say, God, what are you doing? What is going on? in me um and what uh d- what needs to change and so uh as i spent a lot of time you know journaling through uh what i was feeling what i was experiencing i felt like okay um there there's some things that are unbalanced at the moment and um 
And so I felt like I suddenly needed to address that imbalance. And uh, as I began to assess um, kind of where my heart was at, what was going on, the things that I was uh, doing in the office and around work, um, I, I realized that uh, there were four major things uh, that were missing. And we actually have a slide for this. Um, the, the four rocks uh, of my job specifically, and you might have this experience in your own life where you have four things that absolutely have to happen, the foundation of everything you do. Um, my first one, uh, which I think is true across the board, it was my personal walk with God. Um, I really uh, need my personal walk with God to be um, flowing, to be enriching, um, and that was something that wasn't happening um, because I had let other things take its place. Secondly, um, was my personal study of God's Word, the Scripture. Um, I have many times uh, dove into God's Word, uh, even during this season where I was feeling like I was burning out, but it was never for my own personal enrichment. It was always for a ministry event or a ministry moment, um, or, or maybe to share a word of encouragement with another person uh, from God's Word. The third uh, rock that I felt like I was kind of missing uh, was leadership development. Like, how do I develop the people that are right under me uh, in ministry? So my youth ministry staff, our interns, um, and, and other students that are showing leadership qualities and capabilities. Um, like, how do I invest in them well? Um, and then the fourth one. Uh, was just contact, being in contact with students, being in contact with members of the church body. Um, these are the, the four ministry or rocks of uh, my ministry experience that I feel like had kind of gotten misplaced. I had them out of order. Um, and so, you know, have you ever seen like the, the food hierarchy pyramid, like the things that you're supposed to be eating? Um, I actually have uh, kind of my ministry pyramid uh, here on this next slide. Um, yeah, go ahead, go for it. Um, but I had all these other, sorry, it's not this next slide, but I had all these other ministry responsibilities that I was working on. Um, so I had worship ministry that started taking, uh, away from, uh, from my time invested in my personal walk. Um, and, uh, I had, uh, vacation Bible school responsibilities and, uh, what else do I have here? Missions and outreach, um, administrative responsibilities, um, and then some other miscellaneous stuff like our, our uh, remodel project and some other things. And then also uh, any like tech stuff around the facility. Like these other ministry responsibilities ended up taking priority um, in, my, uh, in my walk in, as I did life, as I made my way in life. Um, and so this ministry hierarchy pyramid um, was uh, it's supposed to look like this where my foundation is my personal walk and my study, leadership development, and contact ministry. But what had happened uh, was that my pyramid got flipped upside down. And the things that aren't as important in life, aren't as important in ministry, uh, ended up taking priority in my time and the things that I was doing. And so um, we had uh, a, a problem. I had a problem um, because what happened was the things that were now foundational in the use of my time were not filling my soul. They were not filling uh, me up. They weren't giving me life and energy. Um, and uh, it be had become uh, an unbalanced practice of how to, to live out uh, life in ministry. And so um, there, I think when this kind of thing happens, there's three reasons why. And these, uh, this is one of the things that I began to like process through while I was on sabbatical. As I walked through these three reasons and tried to ask myself, okay, how, how is this affecting me? And so uh, the first reason is that we find ourselves uh, dependent, or so we find our, our value uh, is dependent on, um, I can't remember what I wrote on the first one there, dependent on, oh, um, our performance. I just couldn't remember what order I had put them in. Um, so yeah, our, my, my value is dependent on my performance and the things that I do and depending on how I perform, how good I feel about myself. And when I start to believe that my value is dependent on my performance, uh, which is what happened when my pyramid got flipped upside down, 
um, then I began to suffer. Um, and emotionally, I began dr to be drained. And, and uh, relationally, I began to be drained um, by the things that I was investing myself in. The second uh, thing that we, we feel that we have to meet someone else's expectations and that our value is dependent on someone else and what they think of how I'm doing. And so when I began to think that way, even if that person uh, is God, um, then it becomes an idol where I, I begin to place my value is being dependent on um, my value being dependent on someone else's expectations of me and my performance. And so that was uh, something, too, that I began to, to start to feel the weight of um, as I was having my pyramid flipped upside down and my priorities misaligned. And then the third one, sorry, I got one more. <laughs> the third one uh, was that uh, when I started feeling that uh, my need to control things was greater um, in order for me to feel better, my value was then dependent on the outcome that I could control. Um, and what was funny is a lot of times in life, we just simply don't have control. Um, and so when I strive for control over circumstances, um, that uh, was a characteristic of my pyramid being flipped upside down. Gosh, I hope this metaphor is landing all right. <laughs> but it really made a lot of sense to me as I was processing through a lot of this stuff. And so I found that because my priorities were misaligned, I was just in a season of, of um, depression, of, of really just being emotional, of not really quite, uh, basically it just kind of felt like I had lost my way. So. Thanks for sharing those lessons with us. Um, this is so good. And I, I, I read a, a while ago this quote, and I can't remember exactly, but it, was, it went like this. Burnout happens when we try to give what we don't possess. <laughs> so uh, that's why for us as pastors, it begins with worship, begins with being in God's word and, and prayer so that we have something to give because we can't give what we, we don't possess. And so I'm so glad you were able to, you know, recovering some of those rhythms, allowing you to be able to give because now you possess uh, some, new, some new rhythms and habits in your life. So, so a lot of uh, kind of serious soul work, heart work during sabbatical. Um, but I, I know you also got to do some fun stuff. Maybe you had some a fun story you could share with us. Yeah. Uh, so one of my favorite things that happened while uh, I was away was actually within the first uh, week or so. Um, my uh, son and I were out. Uh, Titus. Hey, Titus. Uh, we were at Walmart. And while we were just uh, going out to the car after we'd finished shopping, uh, we noticed uh, one of those Chinook helicopters, the double prop helicopters. It was like flying right over the Walmart parking lot. And I was like, that's so cool. And as I watched, I realized that that thing is going to land right there at the airport. I was like, Titus, how cool is that? You want to kind of get a little bit up close and we can go drive up to the airport, sit in the parking lot, watch them unload and, and do some uh, whatever they're going to do, probably fuel up. And so uh, we drove up to the, the parking lot of the airport and sat there and we just like watched these guys like drop the back down and then all hop out. And then one by one, they like did their jobs around the helicopter and then walked over to use the restroom at the at the terminal facility. And uh, the last guy that was walking over uh, could see that we were just sitting there watching. And Titus was in the front seat, just like eyes all big and everything, just really excited about you know, just seeing this big, huge helicopter. And this last guy walks through the gate uh, and he says, hey, you guys, uh, you guys want to see the inside? And we were like, uh, yes, please. And so we sat there for a little bit. They did a couple of other things around just to make sure that uh, the, the, they were all taken care of. And then uh, they invited us out onto the tarmac. We walked out, tried not to slip on the ice because it was still snowing. Um, and we got to the helicopter and the guy gave us a tour, walked us around the whole thing, showed us like how the radios work and the fuel and how many tons this thing can lift into the air. It was so cool. Um, and then was so, so nice because in his pocket, he whipped out one of his his uh, patches that he would wear on his shoulder that was to signify, like, I'm part of this crew, uh, and handed that, one of his mission patches, to Titus. And he got to take that home as a gift. It was such a cool, like, moment. Um, and, like, totally unplanned, uh, but just, like, happened. And so that was one of our, our cool stories. 
Um, that was on the front end of our trip. Yeah, I'll get, get to that in just a second. Um, on the back end of the trip, uh, it was really interesting. We got a chance to go to district conference in Hawaii, um, which was beautiful, fun. Uh, we got off the plane and I was like, this is so cool. The weather just feels so warm because we just came from frozen Utah. Um, and so we were really excited to be there. And Avia's face was all like, oh, I like it here, she said, as she got off because she could just feel the warm air. So we get to our Airbnb the first day. And I kind of jokingly say, hey, do you want to move here? And she says, no, uh, I don't want to move here. And then a little bit later, um, she produces a hand-drawn picture of a building with a cross on it with Price Chapel written across the top. And at the bottom of the picture, it says, I miss my church. And that was like, that was such a, a cool moment um, to see like how much this community means to, to my kids. So that was really cool. Um, yeah. That's great. You're making me cry, too. So. <laughs> oh, I can't say that story without uh, crying. I know. We don't have a Kleenex in here. That's okay. Um, well, I, after sabbatical, you've been back for a few weeks now. Obviously, we got back. It was like, okay, getting back in the flow, and then it just got crazy, and your life went to like, okay, let's start figuring out how do we live stream, and how do we tur- church online, and how do we connect. And um, But what are you doing now differently than you were maybe in, in the months before sabbatical? Yeah, um, one of the big things that I learned uh, with the result of my my kind of priorities being flipped upside down is in order to get them right, um, I needed to spend time in rest. I needed to spend time uh, in the gift that God has given us of Sabbath rest. I had gone too long uh, with my priorities upside down, and now I needed to get them right. And the God prescribed path to do that is by resting well, by Sabbathing well, by taking that time to invest in those things uh, and being intentional. And sometimes that means doing uh, some some intentionally weird things for our life, uh, like getting up in the morning, saying a specific prayer, lighting a specific candle. Uh, these things that uh, in, in other church traditions are called liturgies. Um, that help form our hearts, form our perspectives as we relate to God. And so, uh, yeah, God's gift of Sabbath uh, is all about ceasing um, and ceasing from so many things. We cease from work. uh, We cease from efficiency and productivity of work. We cease from control over all kinds of things in our life that we're trying and worrying of over. We cease from our, our idolatry of self and our self-interests. And we cease from enculturation and what this culture is trying to drive home, the values it's trying to drive home to us through news and media and its sense of justice. And instead, what we do well on Sabbath is we embrace. Uh, we embrace rest Um, both physical and uh, mental rest. As we think about work, we're constantly engaged in both of those. And so ceasing uh, those things means that we can rest our minds and rest our bodies. Two, that we can rest our emotions, uh, our our spirituality. We can rest um, our our relationships as well as we cease to to control and, and worry about other people. And then thirdly, um, we get to embrace just this, uh, this uh, connection and this unity that we have in relationships with other fellow believers. Um, and so c- just coming back recently, one of the things that we've done is we've had, uh, we've had Dave and Corey Hyde over. We've had Shane and Gina Gagan over uh, just to share meals, which is now, now we can't have anyone over. Yeah, now we can't have anybody over. Uh, we had Sky Henderson over, too, just to, to share meals and enjoy good fellowship with one another. And then the fourth thing, too, that we embrace uh, is kingdom values. What are the kingdom values uh, that we see in Scripture, and how can we embrace them more? And so a lot of what I do now uh, is centered on how do I appreciate this gift of Sabbath rest in ceasing those things that have drugged me down and flipped my priorities upside down, and then embrace the foundational aspects of being a Christ follower um, through, through rest, whether that's physically or emotionally or, um, 
or embracing kingdom values or uh, engaging with community. So a lot of what I do now is focused on that. And sometimes that means like I just change my schedule a little bit. I get up earlier in the morning, I go work out, or we invite people over um, and, and we just kind of reorient our priorities. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of what I find myself doing a lot now uh, is thinking through how do I cease the things that aren't filling me up and how do I embrace the things that will. That's good. Uh, Alex, I've been talking a little bit about just how his lessons from sabbatical can be applied in our lives, in your life, in my life. Um, and I think part of, of this moment is we're going to need to just, like, take a step back and rest. And we can easily just become overwhelmed by the constant news cycle right now. And I'm going way too much to johnhopkins.org and seeing the coronavirus, um, you know, counter of deaths and infections and um, – so I want to encourage you, maybe find like a day a week where you're just for that day, you're just not going to look at the news. You're just going to you maybe even disconnect from social media. Don't do that on Sunday because we want you live streaming the service. Um, Amen. But another day and, and just like just step back from that for a little while. I know I need that. In fact, I did that um, on Friday this week is my uh, kind of my Sabbath and. And I hadn't been Sabbathing well for a few weeks because things have just been crazy. So yesterday I, or Friday, I was really intentional in doing that. Uh, but there's this passage in, in Hebrews chapter 4 that speaks about this, this, this rest um, that God wants to give to us. Uh, this rest, the Sabbath that began at, at creation. God created for six days. On the seventh day, he rested. He Sabbathed. And, and then he, he gave one of the Ten Commandments to his followers, the Israelites, was to work six days a week. Don't be lazy. Work hard six days a week, but one day a week, you Sabbath, you rest, you cease, and you trust God to do what he needs to do. And so this, this passage I love, um, it's for, from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. It speaks about the Sabbath still being um, part of a rhythm for a New Testament Christian. It says, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works just as God did from his. Because God rested, we can rest. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. And so there's an invitation to us, an invitation that Alex was able to accept and experience, and we want to issue to you and have you experience of entering God's rest, um, trusting in him in the midst of, of the chaos of, of everything going on. And so, Alex, I just wondered if you could, you could kind of finish up this interview and then we, um, by praying for, for all of us to find that rest and to have that from what you've learned. And then Alex and I have a couple cool stories we want to share and, and a couple updates before we, we finish our time together. Yeah. Well, God, we just come before you now and I pray for our church body uh, as we gather together in front of our screens, God, to, to spend this time uh, fellowshipping, uh, hearing from your word, hearing from uh, what you have encouraged uh, us to do through your word uh, and your design, that, God, you would bless us with rest today, that, God, each of us would take a moment uh, to, to examine our hearts, examine our motives, examine uh, the things that we are doing and we are invested in uh, and, and ask the questions, the serious questions, uh, and sometimes the soul-searching questions of what do I need to do in order to engage in true rest? Because, God, our souls need it so desperately. In a day and age where we are, are so busy moving around, uh, going frantically from uh, event to event or thing to thing or, or online post to online post, that, God, you would, you would help us calm our minds, calm our hearts and souls, and just engage with you. And, God, I know that just as you did when I was on Sabbath, you will meet with us. Your presence will fill those spaces of rest and bring hope, bring new life, bring joy. And, and God, that you will bless our hearts. I know that you will do it because, God, that is what you did for me while I was on Sabbath. God, I just pray that you would uh, 
fill us with your spirit as we engage with you, as we set those things aside um, for something that is greater, that is you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Alex, for praying for us. I really believe that God does desire to work all things out for our good, to take the pain and suffering and the bad and work it out for good and bring good out of, out of bad things. And so we're, we're just listening for the stories of God doing that. I want to share just a couple cool stories with you this morning from our church community. And as you have things that you see God doing in this, these moments, please share them with Alex and I because we, we want the whole church family to know about what's happening. Um, so what I uh, want to share with you is um, about um, my grandma and Kathy Butler. So my grandma, Lorene Swinburne, has been a member of Price Chapel like her whole life, and she lives in the Heirloom Inn. And a little over two weeks ago, I had the last uh, visit I was able to do with her in the Heirloom where I was able to go inside. And as of a couple weeks ago, you can't go in the Heirloom. They don't want anyone going out of the Heirloom except for doctor appointments. So she's just kind of stuck in there, doesn't get visitors. And um, she doesn't have the, the technology uh, to be able to watch our live stream either and connect on like the, the midweek videos and that stuff. So fortunately, uh, there's a member of our church family, Kathy Butler, who works at the Heirloom. And Kathy's just been an amazing friend of my grandma, Lorraine. And what Kathy did last Sunday is she brought her computer to the Heirloom when she was working because she's allowed to go in as a worker. And she clocked out and she was able to go down to my grandma's room and, and connect to their Wi-Fi and do church with her and stream the service with her last Sunday. I think she's doing the same right now, so uh, Kathy and Grandma, hi. And I was just so uh, awesome that Kathy would do that, and what a blessing to my grandma. And then both of them getting together and, and do church together. So that's just one story I uh, wanted to just share to encourage you. And then, um, Alex, could you, you, you have a story about one of our students that you wanted to share with us. Yeah, um, yeah, I had a story about one of our students, uh, Carter. Hopefully you're watching Carter. If not, uh, I'm going to point you to this link later, and you can watch okay. it then because uh, you're getting uh, a shout-out. Uh, but I was uh, talking with Carter just uh, a week or two ago uh, about uh, this whole thing that's going on with the coronavirus and, and social distancing and all kinds of stuff. And so I was really trying to just encourage a lot of students. And we posted a um, we posted on our social media feed a picture that just said, Pray with it. And uh, so I engaged a couple of our students just with about that. Like, how, what are you thinking? What are you praying? Or have you been praying? And Carter shared with me um, that uh, Carter had been praying uh, for some family members. And I mean, just the fact that uh, Carter had spent that time focused in prayer a couple of nights, uh, just really focusing on praying for the well-being of people that she cares about, just warm my warm my heart uh, as I was thinking about, you know, how do we stay connected as a community? How do we, and prayer is such a fantastic way to do that, to be praying for one another. And uh, so I was just really proud. It was just a proud moment as a youth pastor, uh, being able to hear about students that are praying for, for people that they, that are in their circle of influence. So I was really proud of you, Carter. <laughs> awesome. That's a great story. Well, I want to share uh, just some announcements with you, some things that are happening that we want to be able to keep everyone um, on the same page. Um, first, I just want to mention, if you have financial need during this time or you need someone to go pick up groceries for you or any of that, we've created um, a Google Doc where we're just recording everyone who's offered to help, and we want to match that with need. So please, please let us know, and, w and we want to get you connected. Um, if you're able to give during this time, we appreciate your faithfulness to continue giving and supporting the ministry of Price Chapel. Um, this is going to be a difficult time for, for all of us um, financially. A lot of people are, have lost jobs or are furloughed for a while from work. And um, so we want to just continue to be engaged as a church community. You can give a few different ways. You can give um, online, pricechapel.org. Um, we have a safe, secure online giving platform called Tithely. You can also do that via our church app. Um, you can also set up bill pay or e-pay with your bank, or you can go old-fashioned and just mail a check-in uh, to the church here. Or we also have a mail slot right by the office door, and you can just drop it in there, too, and we'll get that um, for you. Our church campus continues to be closed kind of indefinitely at this point. Um, we know at least through middle of April, we're not going to be able to have groups of, uh, of any size really gathering together. So we're, we're pivoting to, to move more and more of our ministry online and by phone and by text. Um, also, uh, many of you know, uh, know on Friday, Governor Herbert came out um, with 
kind of some new guidelines, stay safe, stay home guidelines. And he asked for all employers, um, wherever possible, to allow employees to work from home unless they cannot do their work from home. And so what we're going to be starting um, this week for our Price Chapel employees, for Alex and Michaela and I, um, is we're going to work from home as much as possible. We're still going to have to come here to record live stream and, and check the mail and do some different things. Um, but we'll be working from home. So we're available on our, on our cell phones, and, and please connect with us um, as we'll, we'll continue to be working during the day. We've also been starting some Zoom groups, and so we've been putting that information out on social media. There's a women's group that my wife Renee is leading on Tuesday evenings at 8 o'clock, and then there's one on Wednesday, um, uh, sorry, Tuesday mornings at 6 a.m., and then Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And then we've also started a Lenten prayer on Wednesdays at noon on Zoom, and then also we're going to have a men's group going at 6.45 a.m. on Zoom starting this week. So look for all that information on our social media and our weekly email. We'd love to get you um, connected there. We also will be sending out our annual reports by this next Sunday. So we are in this whole mode right now where we're, we've prepared a budget, which may seem ir irrelevant. Um, I don't know. We've been working on nominations for governing board and elders and uh, reports and all that. And so we will get that out on Sunday. So look for that in your email. And then we have scheduled to have an annual meeting on April 19th. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to do that in person, so we're trying to figure out how we do that. We may very well be sending out mail-in ballots for you. And so just look for that. We'll be giving more information um, about that. I had some, like, really creative ideas I want to do for Easter for, like, a drive-in or drive-through church. Uh, but now with the new guidelines that the governor's put out, he's really asking us to just stay at home unless it's an essential, necessary thing. So we're not going to be able to do some of those. We'll just have to do another um, live stream, but we'll, we'll try to make it epic or something. Maybe I'll dress up like the, like the Easter Bunny because, you know, the Easter Bunny just relates to the Easter story of Jesus so much. Um, but I, I just want you guys to hear, too, what um, uh, we're trying to keep uh, the children connected. Michaela's sending out a weekly email with uh, Curriculum for Kids. But Alex, could you share, too, just what you're doing with the youth? Yeah, uh, one of the things that we've been doing is trying to stay connected uh, through whatever means possible, really. Um, so I've encouraged our, our uh, youth adult leaders to connect with students uh, via text or social media um, and just to, to hear how they're doing. Um, I actually called a student last week and just spent some time talking with her. Uh, I think we spent almost a half an hour on the phone. So like, uh, we're really just trying to engage with students. Uh, just so that we can uh, maintain the community that we've built already um, and and continue to share Jesus' love uh, through that. We've also been posting a devotional on our social media that happens on Tuesdays, so I'll be continuing to do that as well. Um, and then, yeah, so we've uh, got a Zoom call that's going to be happening. I think we're going to be scheduling it for sometime during Tuesday, um, so we're trying to figure some of that out, make sure all of our students are on the same page uh, technology-wise. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, it's been a lot of fun connecting with students throughout the week. They've got all kinds of you guys have all kinds of ideas about the you know the things that are going on, and it's fun just to engage with you guys. So uh, appreciate that. Thanks, Alex. Well, thank you for spending this time with us, letting us invade your feed, your living room, wherever you've been watching at. And as you go today, receive this benediction. May the love of the Father and the grace of the Son and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Have a great day, and God bless.